in the community. Here at Tampa First, with our multicultural environment, we have many different activities. We have Pathfinders. We have many things for our young people. We have Tampa Adventist Academy, uh, pre-K through uh, 11th grade school, soon to be 12th grade school, where we minister to the needs of many different people, many walks of life here in the Tampa region. And so we here at Tampa First really appreciate what God has given us, the ministry opportunities He's given us, and ultimately we want to serve Jesus Christ. We want to surrender our lives to the one who has already saved us through His death and His resurrection. We look forward as Seventh-day Adventist Christians here at Tampa First that Jesus Christ is coming back soon. So whether you come here to visit us uh, uh, for vacation or whether you're coming here to relocate with work or your family, we welcome you. So come and join us, and God will not only bless you, but he will bless us for your presence here. Good morning, church family. That was a one. Good morning, church family. I'll make you stand up one more time. Good morning, church family. Allow me to share with you a few announcements this morning, the first one being that on the first and third Sabbath, so that would be this Sabbath, Bob Vance leads out in a great controversy study hour in the chapel at 7 o'clock. We want to invite you to come on out. Uh, we have a church board meeting this week, which means that the leaders of our church, along with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, will be meeting together in the library to discuss the future of our church and make decisions. So if you're not a part of that church board meeting, I want to invite you at 7 o'clock p.m. Monday night to wherever you are at to kneel down and pray for our church to make good decisions regarding our physical year for 2015. Halloween is coming, and an alternate program that we have for you in our church is our fall festival. So that's October 31. At 6.30 p.m., we'll be having our fall festival here at the church. And finally, good news, our fellowship luncheon will resume uh, in November on the first Sabbath. Please bring food for your family and other guests so that we can all have a great meal together. We have a baptism today, and it's always rejoicing in heaven when people make decisions and reaffirm their decision in life. So at this time, the pastor is going to come and uh, talk to us about a baptismal candidate. And he just ran out. He forgot to bring something. It's always exciting to see the water in the baptis baptistry. Um, you will know uh, that you can't tell the, the temperature. It's probably 60 degrees, so it will feel exhilarating, like the ice bucket challenge a couple uh, months ago. So take it away, Pastor. Thank you, Michael. Jerome, you want to come over here? Jerome Harrison, he has been coming to our church, and he's been feeling convicted and making decisions on some of the appeals. Amen? Yes, amen. He's been making some decisions as we've been making appeals during our worship time, been going to, uh, I believe, the Sabbath school class with Pastor William. Is that correct? That's correct. And uh, he uh, wants to make a recommitment. You know, in the Bible, we, we know that in the book of Acts, <laughs> there were some disciples of John who were baptized by John, but when they heard the gospel through the apostles, they were rebaptized. And so Jerome has shared with me that he is under conviction that after he's been baptized, has been baptized, he's drifted. It happens, doesn't it? Now some of us drift, and it's just a little drift, and we come back, but some of us drift to the point where we believe that we need to make a public confession once again of our faith in Jesus Christ. And so Jerome has made the decision to be baptized in our church. Now, we usually vote them into membership, but I need to share with you is a little wrinkle. There's always wrinkles in, in organization. He is actually still a member of a church, another Adventist church. So we can't have you having two memberships. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the vows here with Jerome. We're going to have prayer with Jerome. And then I'm going to ask you to just give us a, 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 a signification, of a vote of um, affirmation. Not of membership, but affirmation. We'll do the, the vote of membership a little later. Does that sound good? 
So, Jerome, I want to ask you just a couple questions. Jerome, do you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, and do you desire to live your life in a saving relationship with Him? Yes. Amen. Jerome, do you accept the teachings of the Bible as expressed in the statement of fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and do you pledge by God's grace to live your life in harmony with these teachings? Yes. Amen. Jerome, do you desire to be baptized as a public expression of your belief in Jesus Christ, to be accepted into the fellowship of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and to support the church and its mission as a faithful steward by your personal influence, tithes and offerings, and life of service? Yes. Amen. You've heard Jerome's response to these questions. We've talked earlier. We've prayed together. It's good to see a son of God come home. Amen. It's always good to see a son or daughter of God come back home. And Jerome, you're an example of maybe some of us who know people have drifted. How many of you know some people have drifted? We pray for those, those loved ones, those friends, those family members. You know, God's not done yet, is he? Aren't you glad, Jerome, if he can bring you back like he's done? He can bring all of us back. We need to continue to intercede on behalf of those loved ones who have drifted. At this time, I'm going to ask you to bow your heads with me as we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for Jerome, for his commitment to you. Lord, as he is baptized uh, in this rebaptism, Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would fall on him. He, your Holy Spirit's already fallen on Jerome. There's nothing magical in these waters. You've changed his heart. You've brought him back. And I pray that this would be a public expression for Jerome to share, not just with himself and the heavenly angels will be rejoicing, but also with us here. And if there's someone here who might be convicted over uh, this baptism and as a witness to this baptism, I pray that you would bring them back as well, or to you for a first time. We thank you and praise you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. While Jerome and I are getting ready for uh, the baptism, I want to ask the young people, the children, to come forward. Uh, we're going to bring the little schoolhouse up here and collect the children's offering. It goes to TAA Worthy Student. How many of you enjoyed TAA last week, the special Sabbath? And so we're going to be uh, giving money for those children uh, who um, need assistance. I don't think any child should be unable, no matter what, to go to TAA. Do you believe that? And it happens when we're benevolent right here. So please wave those fi ones, fives, tens, and twenties to the kids. And uh, I think Eileen Valadares is going to have our children's story as uh, Jerome and I get ready for the baptism. boys and girls how are you doing today is this Sabbath a happy Sabbath for you yes okay well today I'm gonna to tell you the story behind this. can any of you see this look what is this you tell me what is it a scar a scar yes I have a scar on my foot one day when I was a little girl, I was about three or four years old. Who here is three or four? How old are you? 
Okay. <laughs> well, when I was about three or four years old, I went around the block with my mom, and we decided to ride a bike together. And we were just casually riding around on one bike together. So she was on the seat, and I was on the little rod. And pretend you're riding a bike for me, all of you. Ride a bike. That's good. You're a pro. Okay. And when you're riding a bike, what's in front of you? What's spinning? Does it look cool when it's spinning? Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. So I, I decided, I'm going to put my foot on that wheel. It looks really cool. So I just started playing with it, and my mom said, what do you think she said? Don't do that. And then I said, why? It looks cool. And then she said, don't do that. But I decided I was going to do it again and again. And then I thought it was funny when she told me not to, say, not to do it. So I kept doing it, and then we fell over. And now I have a scar on my body to remind me of the time that I didn't listen to mommy. Sometimes we don't understand why our parents tell us to do things, or even why Jesus asks us to do things. But we need to know that they know better. Jesus knows all things. That's why he tells us to do certain things. So basically the story is a story of obedience. So be obedient to your parents and be obedient to your heavenly father because they always know what's best for you. I didn't know that I was going to fall off the bike, but my mom knew better and she told me. So, so would anyone like to pray for us today? I'll pick a volunteer. Come on. Dear God, thank you for this day, and thank you for the many miracles and the many blessings. And be with people who have no food or shelter. And thank you for the story we have heard today about when she got her scar and how important it is to listen to your parents. In Jesus' name, we Father, amen. amen. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Happy Sabbath, church. My voice is a little croaky this morning, but trust me, I can still speak it out. As we get ready for our garden of prayer, and as I go before our throne of God on behalf of this wonderful congregation, I want you to be mindful of a few things. My wife asked me, or shared with me one day, she said, Anthony, I read something and it went this way. It says, what if God blessed you? And I'm speaking to you now. What if God blessed you today with that that you asked and prayed for of him yesterday? Would some of you be empty handed? It's important that we come to prayer before our Father on a daily basis. It reminds me of the hymn, No Sweet Hour of Prayer emphasis on sweet hour of prayer. And I'll admit to you, sometimes my prayer is like speed dating, based on the circumstances and what's actually prioritized in my life. I come to God with some very quick prayers, but I realize that we need to take time because we don't want God to respond to us in a matter of minutes or seconds. We want his full and holy attention given to us when we're in our needs. And I'm just going to share with you briefly as you bring your prayer request forward. I'm giving you some time, but as you bring your prayer request forward and put them in this box here, and they will be prayed over by our prayer warriors. And I also invite you, if you're so inclined, to stay up here with me as we pray. But um, yesterday I took a journey to Camp Kalakwa Many in the congregation know where Camp Kalakwa is, but if you don't, it's past Gainesville, and I took a trip up there yesterday morning with uh, another brother. We were carrying some items for camping. Our Pathfinders are camping this weekend. 
But the build up towards that trip for me was kind of a little bit unusual because I, I, had, I had this foreboding about going, but I've gone to Camp Kalakwa many a times and I was putting it on the fact that I hate that two, two hour drive. To me, it's kind of boring. I thought maybe that's why I don't really want to go. But I know I, I said I made a commitment, so I said, but you know what? I'm going to pray about it. And then as the, as the week went on, I asked others, look, I'm taking this trip on Friday morning. I want you to pray for me and pray for us, pray for our pathfinders. On the day that we were to leave yesterday morning, as we were getting ready to get into our vehicles, I, I grabbed Pastor Brad and I said, Pastor Brad, hold on, before we go, pray for us. And so we gathered together, he and I and another brother, and we prayed together and off we went. As we were traveling up there, I thought, you know, to break the monotony of the constantly looking at trees and cars past me, I thought, I'll put on some music. I'll put on some Christian music. So I'm driving the van, so I put on the CD and I'm praising now. And I'm really engrossed in my praise now. But as I'm driving, I'm watching the vehicle in front of me, which is my friend. And he's got a paraphernalia stuff packed to the hilt in the back of his truck. And I told him, I'll follow behind you so if anything falls off, I could be the first responder. I could alert you. So we're driving, we're about 20 to 30 minutes out from our destination, and we're in the far left lane now. And then he takes and he moves his vehicle to, to the center lane. And we have been doing this pretty much throughout our trip. But this time I thought, okay, why is he moving to the center lane? Because there's nothing obstructing our path. There's no truck or anything that we're trying to get around. But I thought, okay, I told him I'd follow behind him. So I move over. We're in the center lane. Then he quickly goes over to the far right lane, what I call the slow lane. I thought, okay, I'm going to go. But as I'm going over to follow him in the right or slow lane, I'm looking at the bike tire on his truck, and it's bouncing like a basketball. Bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. And then by the time I position myself in that far right lane, the tire just explodes. What did we do before we went on this trip, though? We prayed. What was my foreboding all this week, though, was the need to pray. Spend time praying. Spend time praying for the simple stuff, the middle stuff, and the most important stuff. Spend time praising, because I'm praising you today, because I'm coming back with a report of gladness and thanksgiving, because I could have saw unfold before my eyes something that I've never wanted, wanted to report back to this church. So with that, I ask you, join me now as we seek the Lord in prayer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just have so much to be thankful for. Father God, as we come to you this Sabbath morning, dear God, that too is a miracle, a blessing, a blessing of life, and not only life, but abundant life. Dear God, as we kneel before you as your faithful servants, men, daughters, sons, we pray, dear Lord, a, a prayer of, of, of humility. We thank you for the visitors that are with us. Uh, be it the strangers that are within our gates this morning. May they worship with us and our, their fellowship be an enjoyable one and that we, they would be so inclined to return. But dear God, I just have a praise of thanksgiving for you giving us, dear Lord, the blessing, the gift of prayer, a way in which we could be in direct communication with you. No whole signals, no looking for three bars, no putting on, no waiting, no busy signals. We go directly to your throne. I thank you for your blessing yesterday on a trip that we have taken many a times in your service in Pathfinder Ministry, dear Lord, and how you blessed us with safe passage and my safe return. And pray that you will be with our Pathfinders even at this very moment. I pray, dear Lord, for this congregation, dear God. There are many who are needing that breakthrough, needing that answer to prayer. I don't know what they're going through. Some have prayers of rejoice, dear Lord, and some have prayers of sorrow, but I just pray that you reach each and every soul and let them know that prayer is not just something that's just fixed in your word, but it is real. May it become real in their lives. I pray for pastor who will be bringing forth your appointed message, dear Lord, soon. 
I pray for our brother Jerome Harrington, dear Lord, and his desire, dear Lord, to, like a prodigal son, to come back into this fold, and we pray Amen. for his baptism. Pray for each and every ministry, dear Lord, that is representative in this church, dear Lord, and those who are leading out in these ministries, dear Lord. Pray for our young people, not the future of tomorrow of this church, but the present day and what they mean to us. And I pray, dear Lord, for each and every person in hearing of my voice, dear Lord, that they be assured, dear Lord, of salvation, because I know your return is soon. And I'll close the Lord with praying for our world. The Lord, there's much going on from Ebola, the Lord, to strife, to famine and hunger. Some have been suffering a long time, the Lord, but their plight, the Lord, their suffrage, the Lord, is not being brought before the media. But Lord, I pray for those who are in closed pockets, the Lord, who are so deep down in their darkness, dear God, that they realize, is there any light whatsoever out there? I pray for that person, that soul at this time. So keep us now, I pray, and I pray for the prayer requests that have been given. May you bless them and our prayer warriors who pray over them. We pray in Christ Jesus' name, amen. I want to affirm something to you, at which time I'll invite the deacons to stand as we prepare to collect our tithes and offerings. Psalms tells us, Psalms 24 and verse 1 says that the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world 
and they that dwell in it. Here's the affirmation. God doesn't need anything from us, but our obedience and our service to him. As our deacons go prepare to collect our tithes and offerings, I pray that you give as God has given to you freely, without condition, and with full of love. And if you're unable to give, then give in your service and in your prayer for this church, its ministries, and for one another. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you humbly, dear Lord, as an act of obedience and also, dear Lord, as our way of showing our love to you. Thank you for the provisions you give unto us, dear Lord, be it monetary, be it time and service, that we can give back to you that, dear Lord, that is rightfully yours. I pray, dear Lord, that as we collect these tithes and offerings, dear Lord, in this service this morning, that they go, dear Lord, with your will and your wisdom imparted to us to reach those in those ministries and individuals who are in need of it. We pray for those, dear Lord, who are hungry, those who are needing shelter, those who are going without whatever means. We pray, dear Lord, for the needs that we need for running this, our church, uh, and, and letting it continue to be that light upon the hill, dear Lord, inviting all to come in, not only within this community, but as it reaches a large and further field, the Lord, uh, through the church. So bless us now, we pray in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath. Our chains are gone. He saved us. Wretched us. Amen. He reigns upon us. Let us sing. Amazing grace, our chains are gone. My 
my chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. stand up, continue our worship. Our desire is to worship our God today on Sabbath, but also I want him to be in my life. I want to be able to worship him in my daily walk, that I breathe him, that we breathe him. That is my desire for me, for our church, for the world. I want to be just like Jesus. It's a process. I want us all to get there. Mimic Jesus, copy Jesus, worship Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see Beauty that made this heart adore you Hope of a life spent with you So here I am to worship Here I am to bow down here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so highly exalted, Glorious in heaven above Humbly you came to the earth you created All full of sin became poor Hallelujah So here I am to worship Here I am to bow down here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sins upon that cross. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sins upon that cross. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all 
together worthy, all together wonderful to me. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. together wonderful to me let's say lovely worthy and to me one more time you're all together lovely all together worthy all together wonderful to me Praise God. Amen. Let's continue worship. It's uh, hymn 327. If you're familiar with it, you can open up your hymn books or follow along. I'd rather have Jesus. We'd rather have Jesus. Amen. Let's get excited.
That was awesome. Thanks for singing along and praising God. You may be seated. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. We'd rather have Jesus, Lord. That's our commitment than anything, than anything this world affords today. There's a lot of things in this world, a lot of distractions. But Lord, we thank you for Jesus. Because he is the answer to all of our problems. He is the answer to that which ails this world. Bless us, Lord, as we culminate our worship in your word, that you would prepare our hearts to receive your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Distractions. Have you found yourself being more distracted today than maybe a decade ago? Are there more distractions? More information. Good. Which can lead to more distractions? How many of you find that personal, one-on-one, verbal communication is becoming harder and harder? You know, you're here to talk to your husband or your wife or your kids, then something vibrates, something rings. You know, you can't get away from it because it's always in your pocket or your purse or you put your, the women put in the back pockets, right? I hear they're bending the iPhones. I heard that's just a misnomer. Whatever, you know, you sit there, whoa, what's happening? But we're distracted. And sometimes someone might talk to you and it goes in one ear and what? And out the other. Has that happened? Have you talked to your kids? Maybe you talked to your spouse? Maybe you talk to yourself. <laughs> that would be pretty bad if you talk to yourself in one in one ear and out the other. But life's so busy, isn't it? And we ask ourselves the question, how can I just stop this crazy world that's spinning and just listen? Today we're going to start a new series in the book of James. I've entitled this series, Just Do It. Yeah, it sounds like a swishy Nike commercial. But as we talk about this topic in the book of James, we're going to talk about how God wants us to be doers of the word, not just hearers, where it goes in one ear and out the other. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of James. The book of James chapter 1. Starting with verse 19, I have to admit I have a number for every text except for the main one. So for those who you might have the Pew Bible in front of you, maybe the kids, you want to open that up and get to James chapter 1, starting with verse 19, give me a, a page number shout out. What do I hear? 1386. So if you want to use your Pew Bible, 1386, but if it's your own Bible, you'll, you'll be on your own. Does anyone remember what you've been studying in your Sabbath school lessons? Because this is the same topic. What we've been talking about in the sermon hour. What is the first portion of James chapter 1 talking about? You've got to do better than the, the first class. What is the big T? Temptations and trials, that's right. And what does James say? Consider it what? All joy. Not just joy, but all joy when you endure various trials. That's kind of easier said than done, amen? How many of you are dealing with trials? I think we all are. But in the midst of this, James says, consider it all joy. He's building up to what he really wants to talk about. But we're going to begin in verse 19. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man, can we say man or woman, be swift to what? Hear. Slow to speak and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Now, I will share this with you. If every couple would heed the advice of James, I would have less people needing marriage counseling in my office. How many of us in our relationships are swift to talk rather than swift to hear? How many of us, when a spouse or a loved one or a neighbor or someone at work is talking, you're not thinking about what they're saying, but you're thinking about what you want to say? 
And with the distractions of this world today, people are having a harder and harder time finding someone who will just sit and listen. I believe that the increase of those who need professional therapists and psychologists are maybe because they don't have anyone to listen to them. It's too busy. Your, 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 your relationships are, are with Facebook and Twitter, and that's great, don't get me wrong, but there ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. Old school. You know what the real thing is? A real relationship, someone with a beating heart in front of you, looking at you, engaged in conversation, and listening to your story. How many of you have thought about having that in your life? To someone just to listen. And maybe a neighbor needs you to listen rather than talk. We're going on a journey for the next 12 months. Each one, each family unit does what? Reach one. That could be 100 baptisms in October. But can I share this with you? It will probably start with you listening. It will probably start with you giving them a listening ear. Ask God to give you the victory over your tongue so you can just listen. Is that important? The Bible says in the book of James, he said, be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. There's a combo meal here. There's a progression. It's an equation. If you are not, listen to me, if you're not swift to hear, and you're just trying to talk over someone, maybe it's your wife, your spouse, or someone else, conflict starts. Have you ever had conflict over miscommunication? Yes or no? All the time. My wife just said yes. It's true. In fact, I would say that a lot of times, many times in our relationships, it's because we're not listening to one another. We're too busy trying to get our point across. And I believe that a lot of wrath, a lot of anger, a lot of conflict could be resolved if we would just stop and listen. Your neighbor's having trouble. Your co-worker's having trouble. Your son or daughter, your grandchildren or your auntie or your uncle, they're having trouble. Listen. They need you to listen, even if they're wrong. You know how hard it is to listen to a neighbor who's way out in left field? They're so far out left field, they're past the file pole, they're up in the stands, they're actually in the parking lot in left field. They're way out there. But you know, just listen. You'll have time to speak. But sometimes you just need to listen. Better yet, they need you to listen. You know, I shared with you that Psalm 100 was a chapter in the Bible that I memorized as a first grader in the basement of the Harrisburg First Seventh-day Adventist Church in South Central Pennsylvania by Mrs. Diaferio. There's another passage of Scripture that I remember memorizing in first grade too. Do you want to hear it? Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32, 743. I have that number in your pew Bibles. In fact, I could say it by memory, but I'll read it just because I'm going to open my Bible too. I don't want to go too fast. Proverbs chapter 16. Proverbs 16, verse 32. It's good to memorize scripture, by the way. It's one of the sp biblical practices I think that we all need to develop. You say, why do I memorize scripture? Why should I journal things down? Because, you know, when you find a piece of scripture you really, really are convicted on, memorize it. Memorize it. Because, you know, when God's cleansing you of sin, you need to be filled with good stuff. Amen? How do you have a a verse or two of scripture in your mind, maybe for the day, the week, the month, and for this instance, let's see, I was seven, and now I'm 44. I don't want to do the math, but I've had this in my heart, in my mind, for that many years. Can't go wrong with that, can you? Some of you already know this passage. 16, verse 32. He who is slow to anger is better than the what? The mighty. He who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. When God gives you a listening ear, when you listen rather than speak, when you create peace rather than conflict, you are stronger through the Spirit of God than the strongest warrior, the strongest military force on this planet. Do you believe that? 
And so we find that it's better to be slow to anger. It's better to listen rather than to get your point across. You know, it's also important that we're quick to listen, not just to others, but quick to listen to God. Because we get so distracted, don't we? We get so distracted. We're not listening. He's talking to you. He's saying, spend time in my word. Don't just keep spinning. Listen to my voice. Are we willing to do that today? Back to James chapter 1, verse 21. Wow. So how do we do this? Spend time in the word and prayer. Well, James, I like James. Is James practical or what? Yeah, you're studying it. So I'm, I should have an attentive, well-studied audience here. Amen? This sermon covers what you, kind of, you studied last week and what you will study this week. It's kind of a, 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 a synopsis and an introduction. But look at verse 21. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness. And receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. It says lay aside. What? What's you're supposed to, what are we supposed to lay aside? Filth. Is there filth today in this world? Is there filth that can enter into your heart and life? There's filth. There's smut. There's, there's sin. There's wickedness. In fact, James says it just doesn't come in. It can even do what? The wickedness can... Read your Bibles. What does it say? Overflow. I share with you this. If you're not spending time in the Word, if you're not spending time with the Lord, wickedness will find its way in your life. Just by coming to church, just by listening to a good sermon, and just by sitting here trying to gather information from a Sabbath school lesson, if you don't take it home and study it, it's not enough. Listening to me preach and going home and doing nothing about it and not affirming what I share is like going a message going in one ear and what? Out the other. So, we lay it aside. How do we lay it aside? Share, I want to share with you Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. 1383 in your pew Bibles. This is the chapter right after Hebrews 11. Does anyone know what happens in Hebrews 11? What do we call that chapter? The faith chapter. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 shares these words, this laying aside. In fact, Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. The writer of Hebrews, who I believe is Paul, says these words. Hebrews 12, 1, 1383 in your pew Bibles. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us, what do we say? Lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. What do we need to do in order to run the race? Lay aside. I don't know about you. I've run marathons and half marathons. I don't need a lot of extra baggage running. But we all have baggage. And God shares with us that in order to really run this race of faith, to be in stride with the Spirit, you need to give me those things that you're clutching, those sins, the things of filth. You need to give it to me. And I will take them and you'll be cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. We do this not to be saved, but because we're saved. Have you spent some deep time in confession? Have you spent some deep time giving things to God? Remember what I share with you. You don't ask God to grab them from your sticky fingers. He won't do that. Are you willing to say, God, I don't want to do this in my flesh. Give me the power to open my fingers and give you this. You know, we play basketball, and back in the day, maybe you still do put ankle weights on. Five pounds each leg. You just, you just pretend you're out there and you're jumping. You know, I can't only jump this high, but if I keep jumping with these ankle weights, I'm going to be able to dunk. You know, you keep doing this and you're doing this. and Oh, wow, it's great. Well, you know, it's not for the game. It's for practice. It would be foolish to keep those ankle weights on and play the basketball game. You understand that. It's for training purposes. I think sometimes 
we as Christians think that we can just go on and just go through the life of faith and go on the race of faith and not have to give up anything, not lay aside any weight. God says, you can go try that, but you need to lay aside, give to me these things that so easily beset you. You're saying, Pastor, you're being pretty tough. You've been pretty tough ever since we started James and the end of Galatians. I'm sharing with you what James is sharing with us. If we want to do what God calls us to do, we need to lay aside these things. Lay aside your opinions. Lay aside your agenda. Be quick to hear and slow to speak. You know, how many times have I sat in meetings, whether it be board meetings, business meetings, where people come with their agenda, not really listen to the voice of God, and everyone wants to talk. And no one really wants to do what? <laughs> You're smiling. Some of you have been in those meetings, haven't you? You think, wow. Unfortunately, some people like to hear themselves talk. And so they have 15-minute discourses on something that's been already talked about for half an hour. Listen to the voice of God. Be quick to listen and slow to speak. And I believe that there will be less conflict in your life and in the church. But God says lay aside the filthiness and the wickedness. And once that happens, once you're being cleansed, then God implants. Notice what the word of God says. God implants what? What does he say? The word. The Word is implanted deep in the recesses of your innermost being. It's like the good soil that, the, 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 that Jesus shares. That seed is the Gospel in His parable. And we are the soils. There's different types of soils. There's rocky soil. There's hard pan where the seed can't go down to the ground. There's the soil with thorns. And then there's the good soil. The good soil is good not because you are good. It's because you let God into your garden. And you let God take out the rocks. And you let God pull out the weeds. You allow God to make you fertile for the seed of the gospel. So many times, okay, God, give it to me. Just give me, I'm going to open up your word. I'm ready. Pastor, I don't know why. Every time I open the word, I don't get anything out of this. It's boring. It's boring. Well, maybe as you go to the word of God, you need to say, Lord... Open my heart to where, what things I need to lay aside so that your word can be more meaningful. You know, we, you know, we can, let's be honest with you, compared to some literature, the Bible, without the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in your life, can be boring. There's a lot of tantalizing books out there. Great movies, TV shows. Listen, God can't complete, compete with your flesh. You understand that? The God of the universe is not going to compete with Hollywood. Are you willing to give things up in your life so he can implant, implant, to plant in your heart the word? Because I believe we're living in the last days. And I believe that the Holy Spirit is pouring out his former rain to soften the soil of our hearts so that we can be prepared for the latter rain power. But you will never receive the latter rain unless you allow him to give you the former rain. Jesus is coming soon. Verse 22. But be doers of the word. Back in James chapter 1. I'll give you time to get there. James chapter 1. People say, hey pastor, you have it in your notes. You don't give people time to get back. James chapter 1, verse 22. So I'm slowing it down a little bit. James 1, 22. But be doers of the word, and not what? Hearers only, deceiving yourselves. People hear the word. They hear a good sermon on 3ABN or the Hope Channel. You have your favorite preachers. I don't know if it's me. I don't care if it's Dwight or Mark or Doug. It's, if you're not Adventist, I'm just throwing some names out there. Could be Buddy. I like him too. Carlton, his name is. My home, it was C.D. and E.E. -E. That's our favorite preachers. Have you heard of C.D. and E.E.? -E? Anybody have a witness? All right, got some witnesses there. But you know what? You can hear some of the best sermons, and I've heard some great sermons in my life because we love preaching up in my area. 
But if you don't follow up the sermon with the word of God, you're not going to be a doer. You're just going to listen to it. There are a lot of people who like to hang out with Jesus. There are a lot of people who like to hear him and watch the miracles. But when he broke it down there and said you must drink the blood and eat the body of Jesus, he didn't mean it literally. He said you need to give up everything and follow me. Almost all the people left in the book of John. Because they were just there for the show. I hope and pray that you don't stop coming to church. But I hope and pray that you don't just come for the show that you really are open to be led to the Holy Spirit. Because when, when we are led by the Holy Spirit, and we're led to go back and pray and read the Word of God, we will be convicted of the Spirit. The Spirit, in John chapter 16 says, has come to convict the world of sin, righteousness, and of judgment. And we need to be convicted. Remember, God has saved us through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? He wants us to walk for, for our benefit, for the benefit of our families. There are people who are lost and need Jesus. Bottom line is this. To be a doer of the word, you need to be surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ. And that takes us to the next, next verse, 23 and 24. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. This is an interesting illustration. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. Hey, listen. You know who you are, men, women. You know who you are. But if you think that you're going to handle all these things that beset you on your own, it's better to just sweep it under the rug. Because you can try, you can try on your own esteem and your own effort, you can try to have victory. You never will. And so the best way to handle these issues in your life is to do what? Ignore them. And think that they're going to go away. There's an answer to our problem. To that man and woman, as we look in the mirror, wow, well, get away from this. Let's just move on. I know I have an issue, but you know what? I'm just going to go to church. It's going to fix everything. i like for you to come to church, but you still need to deal with an issue. Amen? If there's an issue in your life, you need to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. So no good deeds or what you think are good deeds are going to cover up what needs to happen. This is what I'm sharing with you folks. You're not the answer. God is. Isaiah 64, 6. We're not going to turn there. Your righteousness, all that you do is good, as good without Jesus is as what? Filthy rags. You need Jesus. I need Jesus. I need to live a life of surrender. I need to abide in the vine, Jesus Christ, because when I abide in Him, He'll show me my sin. I will give over my sin, that, the things that beset me. He will cleanse me and fill me with His Spirit. He will fill me with an attitude and a passion to read His Word, to listen to Him, and yes, maybe listen to my spouse and my neighbors who are dealing with a lot of issues. Are you willing to be a doer? of God's word today. You can't be a doer unless you spend time in it. <laughs> oh, I'm going to do it. Well, you can't do it if you don't spend time in it. And you're not going to spend time in it unless the Spirit convicts you to spend time there. Verse 25, But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not for a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Think about this. The law of liberty. We talked about this in the book of Galatians. I believe that the law of liberty is the word of God. That's the context. Who is the center of the word of God? Jesus Christ. If you know the Son, if you have the Son, He sets you free and you're free indeed. That's a central theme from Genesis to Revelation. If you look at God's law, if you look at God's word, I guarantee you, how many of you open up God's word and started contemplating it convicts you of something you're doing wrong. Well, but it sets you free to give it to God. It sets you free. See, Jesus is here to set us free from what? The bondage of sin. When I think of the bondage of sin, I think of the children of Israel who were in bondage for over 400 years. And Moses comes. The most humble man that ever walked the earth other than Jesus. 
and he led them out of Egypt, out of bondage. They put the blood of the lamb, the Passover lamb, over their doorposts, and all, uh, the, the, the Passover lamb, and God led them out of bondage. And then when they got to the Red Sea, they were entrapped again, and he led them through the Red Sea on dry land. Are you willing to trust God and take him at his word? You might feel like you're at the Red Sea right now. Saying, how can I be a doer of the word, Pastor Brad, when I'm at the Red Sea and it sure doesn't look like it's parting? And that's when you have to look at the story of the priests with the ark. Remember when they were in the Jordan River, they had to take that step, didn't they? And when they stepped into the Jordan, all those, those spring-flooded waters of the Jordan backed up and they went across into the Promised Land on dry land. Oh, folks, give it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. Verse 26, if anyone among you thinks he's religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his, he deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. If Pastor Brad, we're talking about doers of the word. But remember, we began with you need to be swift to what? Hear, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. So he uses this being the doers of the word because you know why? People are watching you. People, people are saying, oh, you're a Christian. You're a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. Let me see it. Will you listen to me? Or are you just going to just start talking like a babbling fool and just make things worse? He brings it right back. He says, if you can't broaden your tongue, and this isn't just cursing, by the way. It's speaking out of turn. Because you know there are times to speak and times not to. And you don't know, but God does. If you're walking in stride with the Spirit, God will tell you when to talk and tell you when to shut up. Amen? You say, well, that's scary. No, it's not scary because God's sovereign. And I want to be connected with that because there are some very difficult people in the world. Sometimes there are difficult people in the church. It can happen, can it? But the good news is he will be able to bridle, which we will find out later in the book of James, the untamable tongue. Right? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. That's a lie. That's a lie. Words hurt more than sticks and stones, don't they? Let's be honest. How many of you had things said about you that you can't shake? Or maybe you came out of a conversation, boy, I was asking for someone to hear my story, and I just heard their story. Oh, how horrible. When you go and your, your neighbor needs to share their story, and they're starting to talk to you or a friend... And then you have to top their story with your story. Amen? Now I hear silence. Okay, you can tell a story to connect with them, but don't top their story. Oh, you think that's bad? You should see what happened with my dad. Oh, that makes me feel great. No, you listen. Amen? And God, when you listen, will be able to open the avenues for his word. Listen, I was a Bible worker. Some of you have done Bible work. And I thought I was going to go with Bible lessons in the South Hills of Pittsburgh. We were planting a church. I was a young, out of uh, pre-med. I was going to med school, but I decided to take a couple years to figure out what God really wanted me to do. And I'm there with my lessons. Man, I'm ready to go. I go there, I'm just going to tell these people exactly the truth with the good news Bible lessons, the blue and white. How many of you know the good news Bible lessons? All right. And I go in there. I'm ready to lay it down. I'm like, let's have prayer. You responded to the Bible study. And I'm already talking, all of a sudden, can you pray for me? Hmm. Wait, well, okay, what's up? Well, you know, my husband just left my family. <laughs> you know, and I need you to pray for my sister. And, and, you know, my sister and I don't get along. And I'm looking at my watch. And I have an hour to the next appointment. And I'm listening to this lady's story. I'm not giving her the truth. She's lost and I'm hearing her story. But you know what? I learned that she needed to be, me to listen to her story that day more than she needed the good news lesson. Did she need the good news? But the next time I came, she talked and, and we shared, but eventually we're able to share the good news. Are you getting the picture here? Because remember, the theme for the next 12 months is each one, each family unit, reach one. And I really, really believe the book of James is saying to be doers of the word, we need to listen to people's story. Their story. 
because no one else is listening. You don't pay, post your story on Facebook. Some people do, and that's really scary. How many of you know that happens? The big Facebook. Oh, you need someone to talk to privately. You need to air out your dirty laundry to a million people. You know, it's really tragic when people do that on Facebook, and the reason why they do is they have no one to listen. Oh, that someone would just listen to this person genuinely care so they wouldn't have to post everything on Facebook. It's embarrassing, isn't it? Will you be the one to listen this year? Will you be the one? In conclusion, verse 27, pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this. You've heard this. To visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Oh, this is not easy, is it? You, you visit widows and orphans, but you also, in the process of getting your hands dirty, you remain unspotted. Amen? If you have a problem with alcohol, don't start a bar ministry. Now, God can give you victory, but he also gives you a mind. So, he says, get dirty. Get down with the people. Yes, the orphans and the widows, we know that. We're dealing, and listen, we, we, we have community services on Tuesday. We, we, we feed the, the, the less fortunate on Tuesday nights. We did some screenings. We're going to do more for the less fortunate. There are also those who are fortunate who are less fortunate because they have everything they want, but they don't know that Jesus is coming soon. You understand, the destitute aren't always the impoverished. Sometimes the destitutes are those who have, but they don't have. But as we go into the byways and we go into the highways, as we fulfill the gospel commission, as we get our hands a little dirty, don't get defiled along the way. You need to pray because you will enter into the playgrounds of Satan sometimes. And you need to be prayed up and filled up with the Holy Spirit. Because if you're not, you can become part of it. So what do you mean, Pastor Brad? Well, very simple. Use your mind. You go as a man to a woman who's having marriage trouble, don't be the answer. Amen? You listen to her for half an hour and she has, her husband hasn't talked, listened to her for 10 years, guess who becomes her husband? You're looking at him. Amen? Flip it around the same way. We need to be careful. God gives us wisdom. Be filled with discretion and wisdom because we're calling you this year to have each family unit reach one. But be careful. But the good news is this. The Holy Spirit be with us because God wants us to be doers of the word, not just hearers. God doesn't want us anymore to have the word go in one ear and out the other. He doesn't want us to just go from sermon to sermon to sermon to Sabbath school class to Sabbath school class to Sabbath school class. He wants us to go there and go home and be in his word. He'll change you. He will cleanse you. He will fill you. And he will give you the ability to listen when you're biting your tongue. Because let's be honest, the last thing God needs is a religion with a bunch of know-it-all blabbermouths who just want to get their point across. But will God give you the opportunity to share truth? Do we have a great truth for these last days? Will God pave the way? He will. He will. What a challenge for us today. What a challenge for us today. I'm going to close with this, this story. It's not really a story. It's what's happening. Ebola is affecting this world. Amen. Some of, us in the con some of us in the congregation are from the region of, of West Africa. Now, I saw a picture on Google. Um, uh, I was uh, uh, probably Facebook or something, uh, sharing with, if you've seen the picture of the little girl, African girl laying there on the concrete with a bucket next to her, wow. And to realize that there are many people who no one wants to go in to minister to. Families, just quarantined. We're not going in there. They're dying, some live, many die, and they just lay there, vomiting, high fever, waiting to die or waiting to live. 
Some would say, well, you know what? They're going to live or die. We'll just wait till they live, and then we'll clean them up, and then we'll minister to them. Well, aren't you glad that there are people from all over the world who are going in these places and ministering to these people? Who are risking their lives to comfort someone who probably will die. Who will listen to them even though they're dying. There are people who have contracted Ebola, many people who have lost their lives to give comfort to those who are dying. Isn't that what Jesus wants us to do? In these last days, there's Ebola. It's terrible. It's awful. And we need to pray for this, this terrible strain. We also have sin that's just infecting this world. And people need us to go in there as they are dying. Folks, people are dying. The decay of sin is just eating away at them. And they need someone to listen to them and in return at the appropriate time, share with them Jesus. And the message of hope for these last days. So you might be going through some difficulties. You might feel like the blessings of God are, 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 are being kept from you. You know that's not true. But even in the midst of your trials, even in the midst of your tribulations, God wants to use you. He wants to use me to be doers of his word, not just hearers. Think about that as we hear a special music as our closing song of commitment. We pray for blessings, we pray for peace, comfort family, protection while we sleep. We pray for healing, for prosperity, we pray for your mighty hand to kiss our Love us way too much to give us lesser things. Cause what if your blessings come through raindrops? What if your healing comes through tears? What if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know your near? And what if trials of this life are your mercies in? We pray for wisdom, your voice to hear. We cry in anger when we cannot feel you. Without your goodness, without your love, as if every promise from your word is not enough, and all the while you hear us desperately, yet long that we'd have faith to Come through raindrops. What if your healing comes through tears? What if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know your near? And what if trials of this life are your mercies in disguise? When friends betray us. Seems to win, we know 
the pain reminds his heart and this is not this is not a home it's not a home guess what if your blessings come through raindrops what if your healing comes to tears what if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know your need? What if my greatest disappointments or the aching of this life is a revealing of a greater thirst this world can satisfy? And what if trials of this life the rain, the storms, the hardest nights Are your mercies in disguise? Praise God. Let us pray. Lord, your blessings sometimes come through teardrops, come through pain. Some of us are going through that right now. We might have sleepless nights, but are we willing to pray the prayer, whatever it takes, to know that you're real? Lord, you've called us today to be doers, not just hearers of your word. And sometimes to wake us up, we need to go through the trials, the temptations that we've studied earlier. I know there's some here today who have been convicted through your word and through, through the, the word of music. And some need prayer. You really, really need prayer today. You need prayer because you want to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You need prayer because you need to come back to Jesus because you've drifted. You need prayer because you need healing. Not just physical, it could, be, it could be relationships. This could be you. I don't know what the Holy Spirit's convicting you on today. But as we conclude our service today, if there's anyone that would like to have a prayer today, a special prayer, I want to make a commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe you want to accept Jesus for the first time. Maybe you want to recommit your life to him. If you're that person today, as we're here in prayer, I invite you to stand up. Come down the aisle, come right here in front of me. I ask some of the elders and our prayer warriors to come and meet me down here so that we can pray for these folks. Is there anyone here who'd like to come forward? Amen. Is there anyone else? Don't be afraid. Amen. The Holy Spirit's calling you. Come forward. Amen. 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 Anybody else? Lord, you've seen those who have come forward. You know those who have made commitments in their hearts, but maybe just a little apprehensive about coming forward today. You know the hearts of each one. You know their needs more than, than we know, or even we, we know ourselves. I pray that you'll bless each person here and those who have had special needs and requests in their hearts. Oh, Lord, I thank you that your blessings fall in a myriad of ways. Lord, be with us and guide us and bless us as we intercede for one another, as we are doers of the word, not just hearers. Lord, that 
that wouldn't go in one ear and out the other, but would stop and that we would have you in our lives. We pray these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As we pray for those who are up here, and as you exit, I want to uh, ask uh, our baptismal candidate, uh, where, where, okay, Jerome, if you want to go in the back, I'll have to meet you a little later. So Jerome's going to be Pastor Brad today. So Jerome, just go back there, there near the podium and make sure you say hi to Jerome. He's uh, newly baptized. May God bless you. Have a wonderful, happy Sabbath. Enjoy the great weather. Amen? Take care.